Hey YouTubers, one thing that I forgot to mention in my last video that I just did is that I changed the name of my channel. I'm a pastor, I'm also a professor. I'd rather go with Professor Pipe Smoker. Not a big deal, just a little bit of a change, but um, I think when you smoke a pipe that professors and pipes go together, so I think it's better a little bit. Just wanted to explain that and I hope you enjoy the video. Hey YouTubers. It is Pastor Pipe Smoker. And today I am sitting outside in a very gorgeous 73 degree, very beautiful breeze. Sun is kind of shining, just ducks behind some you know clouds over here in western New York. I am smoking my Barracini for Malay. It is the 601. I'll show you the Barracini right there. Love this pipe. And I am smoking Lane Berry Cherry. Now, here's what I want to say it is very cherry. If you really like a strong cherry flavor, not like cordial cherries, but more like a sweeter kind of cherry flavor, um, that's stronger than Blood Red Moon, this is the tobacco. It burns a little hot, but, you know, so what I do is I take some puffs, let it cool down on my pipe, and smoke a little more now. We all know the pipe test, I hope. So the pipe test is, is you take your pipe, if you can put it up against your cheek without it getting too hot or too uncomfortable, it means that's the right temperature. Right now, this one is at the right temperature. If you don't sip on this and you try smoking it, it's going to get very hot in your pipe. So you want to make sure that you pace out, you know, your smoking on this tobacco. So if I had to say Cult Blood Red Moon to this, what I would say is Cult Blood Med Red Moon is a muted uh, tobacco. It's more of a muted cherry flavor, kind of like a um, little bit like a Twizzler, but maybe a little stronger than a Twizzler kind of cherry. Um, but it is muted. This is more of a wyvern. Cherry. Not quite like a, um, not like a Jolly Rancher, but kind of like a cross between a Twizzler and a Jolly Rancher is what I would consider this to be, at least to my smell and taste. The, the room note on this is absolutely amazing. Um, my wife is not a pipe smoker at all. And neither is anybody in my family. I'm pretty much the only one that relaxes to it. But she had the windows open because it's a beautiful day. And it actually wafed into the house. And uh, she said immediately that uh, it was a very nice smelling cherry coming through the house. And uh, so the room note is really uh, gorgeous. And it also smells, I think the room note obviously is muted more than the actual tin note. The tin note, when you smell it, has a very strong cherry flavor to it. But anyway, it's very smooth. It's not very harsh. It's just a really nice blend on a very nice day. And uh, I, if you haven't guessed already, I love aromatics. And the reason why um, I love aromatics is, uh, one, everybody would call me an amateur because I love aromatics more than burly or whatever else. Hey, if that's your thing, smoke it. I got a sweet tooth. I love sweets and I love aromas and I love incense and all this other stuff. So I'm a smell guy. Like I really love the smell of things. And to me, this has a great smell on it. And a great taste. 
I am a taste guy as well, but man, I just, I love things that smell good. I just love the good smells. So for me, smoking an aromatic is more about smell than it is about taste. Mm. I'll smoke anything, try it once. Minus marijuana, hard drugs, crack, all that other stuff. You, you get the point. I did let this dry out a little bit. Not, not as much as I probably should have. But once again, it does burn hot, so you have to watch that with this tobacco. So it's the Lane Berry Cherry. Wonderful blend. Wonderful. And I'm smoking it through my Barracini 601, and I am excited. Here's why I'm excited. Let me enjoy this first. I ordered five, looks like four, five, <laughs> five new pipes. I ordered a Peterson Dracula and I will not disclose the shape of this pipe until it comes so I can show you but what I can tell you about it is that I looked everywhere for this pipe could not find it I found one place that had it one and I snatched it up I was like I'm getting this Then I got a Savinelli, a Dr. Garbo, another Barracini, and something else. I can't remember all of them. I'll do an unboxing when they show up. Right there, sun's out. You can see it now. Gorgeous day. Just so beautiful. Creating some vitamin D out here. You know, locally, I have to buy online because around here we don't have a lot of authentic smoke shops. Cigar and pipe. Oh, we have a lot of smoke shops, but it's Sticker Shops, which is, I said this before, Sticker Shops are where you go in, you buy a sticker for like 20 bucks, and they give you a bag of weed. Because in New York, it's the other thing about New York, September is notorious for Yellow Jacket. That was a Yellow Jacket. But, um, so you go in, you buy a sticker, they give you weed. We have a lot of those smoke shops. They call themselves smoke shops. They are like bongs, hookah pipes, uh, vapes. They look like, uh, you know, Saturday night at a disco or a club, uh, EDM club. Looks like Coachella and crack because the windows are all blinking. You know, we got to bring some sophistication back, I think a little bit. This is sophisticated, you know? Talking politics, let it hang out of your mouth. Free thinking society. Writing a good book. You know? If there were more, imagine this with me. If there were more like legit smoke shops as in tobacco and pipe where people can just sit in and enjoy each other's company. Talk about the day, about the daily news. What's going on in the country, you know, all that stuff. Kind of becoming a free thinking society again. Tamming this down a little. How cool would that be? Instead, when you get into mind lock, and mind lock is political correctness and 
you know, words that you say that my generation would say that now mean something so different with other generations. Cancel culture, all this stuff. It's bad for society. And if we don't watch ourselves, history can repeat itself. We don't learn. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is the Nazi people, when they were asked, could not believe that their support of not, quote, liking the Jewish people would lead to basically genocide of that people group. And they did not okay it, and they were not okay with it. But they went along with it. There was a brainwashing that was happening in Nazi Germany. People that would have never have fallen for that kind of thing fell for it. And because of it, the Jewish people were labeled what they were labeled and then killed in droves. We always say, well, that can't happen in this country. That will never happen in this country. That could. It could happen in any country. Any country that becomes intolerant of anybody, including not just a different ethnic group, but even a religious group. You know, I know we had problems, you know, with extreme uh, extremists, Muslims that are extremists. But you know, I know a lot of Muslims. Quite a few actually own uh, businesses around here. Great people. Most of them are very kind, you know, but they're they're also very weary and leery of uh, Americans, you know, even though they live in this country are now Americans. Because, you know, we've painted bad pictures. But that could happen to Muslims, it could happen to Christians, it could happen with anybody. When a society becomes intolerant of one another, even political party, you're on the road to either communism, dictatorship, or socialism. America was not founded on that. We were founded. We should be a great country. And if we're not leading the way, we're to blame. We've allowed the country to get this way. If we blame our problems on the next generation down, I need to point the finger at myself because I allowed myself to teach that generation how to be that way. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. You know, we have given away a lot of our industry to other countries. We've given our soul away for money, power, but we need to get back to the basics. The basics are, are straight up for me. The basics for me is this. I want to provide a living for my children. I want to be able to give them some kind of inheritance. I don't care if I'm a billionaire, but I want to provide. But more importantly, I want to just be with my family. And I want to raise a good son. And I want to raise a good daughter. And I want to be a good husband for my family and for my wife, who is a wonderful woman. And if we can be that for our families, we could change this world and our country if we start first and foremost in the home, treating respect and every other thing, 
here, then we can change our towns and cities, our counties, our states, and our country. If you don't like what's changing, be the change. You have to be the change. You have to set the temperature. You have to be the one that's setting the temperature in your home. Nobody else is going to set that temperature. You can allow other people to set the temperature outside of your home. You need to be the person inside your home that sets the temperature. So when your kids leave the house, they know how to treat people with respect and kindness and compassion and everything that should be. And letting them know that money is not everything, that it's a means to an end to provide, but it's not the it's not the goal. The goal is to raise a good family and be good people. And that's the problem, is that we've gotten very selfish and very self-absorbed in this country. Uh, and people have, and they're all out for themselves. You know, there's a time where there was neighbors, and there's this thing going around on social media. I don't know if you know about the picnic and the cow and the cookout, and they invited uh, everybody. They set something on fire, and all the people they thought would show up didn't, and the ones that they didn't think would show up did, and so they got invited to the cookout because they were the ones that were really neighborly, not the ones that you thought were going to be neighborly. It's on social media. It's a little story. It's true, man. If we want to be good neighbors, then, and we want good neighbors, then we have to be good neighbors and show people how to be that way. So, that's pretty much my thoughts for today. I also believe we need to bring art back in. If you think about it, music and art and painting and um, writing and poetry and everything always brought to light a lot of the bad happening within the country. Revolution starts with artists, and yet, you know, our focus has been science, technology, English, math. Should be science, technology, English, arts, and math. Art should be part of it. Some of us enjoy these beautiful pipes that are made by artisans. You know, years and years worth of making these beautiful pipes and different things. So imagine a world without art. It would just be dull and boring and stupid. Talking good art, by the way, not some of the nasty art. You know, the song WAP. I mean, come on, man. You know, that song WAP reminds me of people who do go to the other smoke shops a little bit, you know. All glitz on the outside, all about the money. It's not about the art. We need to bring true art back in, true sophistication back in. Just be good people, you know. If we do that, we'll make a better world for our families, for our daughters, our sons our wives, our neighbors, people around us. So, anyway, I am Pastor Pipe Smoker, and I love this Barcini, Bar um, Barcini. <laughs> I can't talk today. Uh, Barcini 601, Formale, Formale, and, uh, and Lane Very Cherry uh, Tobacco, which I really love. I'm just letting my pipe cool down right now for a second. It's a little, not too bad, it's a little too warm, but uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.